Hey everyone, welcome back. This is our second example for trig substitution using secant. We've got the integral of dx over x squared minus 9 quantity to the 3 halves. We should see this denominator as some variable expression squared minus some constant squared. And that will tell us that this is a secant substitution, u squared minus a squared. In that case, we let u equal to a secant of theta. In this case, our a is 3 and our u is x. And so our substitution will be that x equals 3 secant of theta. We'll also need a replacement for dx. So taking the derivative will give us dx is 3 secant of theta tangent of theta d theta. Okay, so we'll replace all of those using x and dx substitutions. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my initial x substitution dividing both sides by 3. That tells me that secant theta is x over 3 and it helps me assign sides in my triangle because I know that secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. It's the reciprocal of cosine which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I know that my hypotenuse then is going to be x and my adjacent is going to be 3. Pythagorean theorem, this squared plus this squared equals this squared tells me that this will be the square root of x squared minus 9. You can work that out on your own if you're not sure or you don't believe me. And now we'll substitute. So dx is 3 secant theta tan theta d theta. And the bottom I get, x squared would become 9 and a secant squared theta. We'd have minus 9 that was originally there and all of that to the 3 halves. Okay, so I'll bump the 3 out. So we'll say 3. We have secant theta tan theta d theta on top. That's going to be there until we get our bottom figured out here. I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to factor out the 9. So that will be 9 secant squared theta minus 1. And this to the 3 halves, so the half means we're in a square root. And then we're also, everything is cubed. So we want to be careful with this 9. So we'll talk about what is going to happen with that. So we have secant theta tan theta d theta. We still have our 3 on the outside. If I factor out the square root of 9, that would become a 3 there. And then we would have the square root of secant squared theta minus 1, and all of that would be cubed. And if you notice this 3 coming out of the root, we still have the cube operating on the 3. That's really going to be a 3 cubed, which is 27, right? So we would say 3 over 27, which of course we'll reduce in a second. Integral secant theta tan theta. Let's go ahead and simplify our bottom, d theta. So this will be Pythagorean identity becoming tangent squared theta underneath the root. And don't forget your cube on the bottom here. Okay, we'll go ahead and reduce our 3 over 27. We'll become 1 over 9. We will get the antiderivative of secant theta tangent theta d theta over. If I square root, the square goes away. I need to add a cube there, though. So that's tangent cubed theta. I can reduce the tangent theta on the top making that a square, and so we'll get 1 over 9 integral of secant theta d theta over tan squared theta. In its current form, there's no really good way to do this with u substitution. If I break the bottom into secant squared minus 1, I can't split a denominator like I can split a numerator. So here we'll just try converting everything to sines and cosines and see what we get. So we get 1 over 9, and we get the antiderivative of 1 over cosine theta, 
d theta on top and on the bottom. Tangent squared theta would be sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. So we'll go ahead and bump this up and multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll say 1 over 9 integral 1 over cosine theta times the reciprocal down below would then be cosine squared theta on top. The sine squared theta moves to the bottom d theta and then we can reduce a cosine with one of the cosines there. That will give us 1 over 9 integral of cosine theta over sine squared theta d theta. And the way we will work this from here is to use a u substitution where u is sine of theta and du is exactly what we have, the rest of it, cosine theta d theta, right? So this is going to be u squared down on the bottom there. So we will have 1 over 9 antiderivative of du over u squared. This is not a log rule, it's a power rule. We have 1 over 9 antiderivative, if you want to think of u to the minus 2 du. Power rule says when we take the antiderivative, the power goes up by 1, so that's to the minus 1. Divide by the new power. So dividing by negative 1 will give us a negative 1 ninth. Uh, u to the minus 1 would be u in the denominator, so that would be times uh, 1 over sine theta plus c, and then we could go ahead and maybe change the reciprocal of sine. Let's make that slightly different. Let's say negative 1 over 9 cosecant of theta plus c, and now I simply need to replace my cosecant of theta. So I'm going to go back up to my right triangle here and figure out what cosecant of theta is. So remember that cosecant the reciprocal of sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, right? So hypotenuse is going to be the x, and the opposite is going to be the side that is the root, so we'll get x over square root x squared minus 9 for our cosecant, and we'll go ahead and drop that down below where we need it. We will get negative 1 over 9 times x over the root of x squared minus 9. We can clean that up just a little bit. If we want, we could just say negative x over and put the 9 in with the root. 9 root x squared minus 9, all of that plus c. Okay, that is our second secant trig substitution example. We've got one more example three left to go. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you in the next one.